Wow. Those walls. They're so huge. That's Logris, the capital of the Empire. They keep demons out by enclosing the city within a great wall. Humanity has achieved great things on the backs of Slave Malakim. Why the surprise, Lafayette? You've been here before, right? I have. But back then, I was not who I am now. I see. Tethered Malakim aren't even allowed the freedom to observe their surroundings. We'll soon lose such freedom ourselves. Huh? We've reached the heart of the Empire and of the Abbey. Soldiers and exorcists are stationed all around. This is no place for a collection of villains like us. I'm not looking for a place. All I need to find is Artorius. That's it. An inspection. They won't inspect everyone. Just act natural. Your face is all stiff. I know. You, in the black coat. Show me your documentation. Uh, um... Well? Your travel permit from the Abbey? Where is it? <laughs> Foolish girl, how many times have I told you? A magician's apprentice must wear a pleasant grin. Magician? Verily, I present to you the traveling troupe of mischievous misfits known across the land as... Magilu's Menagerie! Entertainment for the ceremony? Why, yes, indeed we are, my dear. Please pardon my uncouth apprentice. Girl, allay the good man's fears and show him the dove trick you've spent all these weeks on. Go to! Huh? Oh, uh, sorry, mistress. I forgot to prepare. Y y you pathetic little shirker! A proper performer is perpetually prepared! It's fine. Doves flying around would be a nuisance. No, this will not do. If you cannot summon a dove, then act like one. Act like a dove. Coo coo. Hey, you can't advertise here! Move along! As you say! <laughs> that was a fine ploy, Mogilu. Well, don't expect tricks like that every day. Coo-coo. <laughs> oh, that murderous gaze! Coo-coo! Those doves were amazing! Just a crude trick. If anything, it just shows the Capitol's defenses are pathetic. More like it shows how much confidence they have in those defenses. How many soldiers are here, Lafayette? The number of exorcists in the Capitol? At least a thousand. And two divisions of guards. I'd expect no less from the Capitol. They're not careless. They're covered. We need transit documents. See how the citizens smile? To think they were fleeing from demons just a few years ago. To hold an observance of this scale shows just how much peace their power has brought. A peace paid for with Lafayette's... Velvet? The Abbey's job is getting harder and harder. We've all got to give them our full support. Uh, let's backtrack a bit. Just what sort of organization is this, Abbey? You're kidding me! How do you not even know that? The Abbey is part of Midgan's Church of the Empyreans. 
Originally, it was an order of paladins and warrior priests devoted to exorcising evil. Yeah. The Abbey's official name is the Exorcist Abbey of the Church of Midgand. Nowadays, its members are all called exorcists. I'm impressed. You've done your research. So basically, they're just one branch of the church, right? And for a side branch, they don't really strike me as humble. Of course not. The High Priest entrusted all his power to the Abbey's leader, Lord Artorius. He's effectively retired. So the Abbey's leader is at the top of the entire church. That's not all. The Prince also gave Lord Artorius authority over all military and government affairs during the crisis. Lord Artorius commands Midgan now, and has formed a new theocracy to combat the Demon Blight. And that is the origin of the Holy Midgand Empire. The Abbey is its foundation, and its ray of hope. Wow, okay, got it. The Abbey's a big deal. Right now, Prince Percival is the one ruling Midgand. He's the Crown Prince. The Crown Prince? What happened to the King? The King is in good health, but he's decided to withdraw from public life and leave the kingdom to Prince Percival. He declared that a new way of thinking was needed to save the world from this crisis. <laughs> this King sounds like quite the guy. Prince Percival is incredible too. He's following in the footsteps of the King by working hand in hand with Lord Artorius in the Abbey. As long as we have Lord Artorius and Prince Percival, the future of Midgand is bright. Ask anyone. <laughs> Got it. So all of Midgand is on Artorius' side. are coming too, right? I'm sure they will, dear. People are saying it's going to be a very important announcement about the Abbey. I want to see the exorcists! We need to thank them for saving us from the demons! You're right. We all have to show them our gratitude and help them however we can. Yeah! I'll follow the rules too. I won't be selfish. They sure are popular. Because these people don't know the truth. You think that's so? That the exorcists are fighting the demons they themselves cannot. That's why the people support the exorcists. <laughs>
Listen to those cheers. The royals sure have these folks in line. Subjects, may I have your attention? It is I, Percival Asgard, Crown Prince of the Midgand Empire. His Majesty, my father, and I are pleased to celebrate with you on this auspicious oh! day. The ceremony started. It'll be impossible to slip in now. After the opening ten years ago, our kingdom faced an existential threat, both from demons and the terrible spread of demon blight. However, one man raised a miraculous sword and stood so that the body and soul of the land Over there. would not be you lost. You can climb up if you want, but attacking now would and be suicide. And the name of that man was Artorius <laughs> Colbrand! Artorius! 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 None here, I trust, are unfamiliar with Artorius's noble act. <laughs> To bring us salvation from demons, he sacrificed everything. But he's a murderer. He called Lord Inominat, one of the five Imperians, and blessed us with the strength of the Malachim. But he's a murderer! Velvet! He serves as a shining beacon of reason in this world of turmoil. And reason is what binds us. But you killed him! You took everything that I loved! So raise your voices in praise to Artorius' devoted work, to the Savior who purifies evil and guides our flock! Let us call him our Shepherd! Shepherd Artorius! Shepherd Artorius! Shepherd Artorius! Even though the world was filled with suffering, I had to ask something tremendous of you all. I entrusted you to endure the pains of reason. I asked you to bind yourselves with shackles of your own will. For the only blade that can expel calamity is one forged from unshaking reason and the iron will to do what must be done. And now that very blade stands ready before all of us today. I offer my body and my life in service to the people of this great land. With the blessings of the Empyrean Innominat, I will guide you to a world without calamity. And this world's suffering will be nothing but a distant memory! You're the one who murdered. Fool, they'll see us. You're the one who killed Luffy said. What? The Shepherd Artorius. That's who you're after? Oh, and here I was hoping you'd just straight up pounce on him. That would be certain death. No, I need a sword of reason and will. That's the only thing that can kill him. Killing Lord Artorius. Playing it safe? Boring! Regrettably, it is at this juncture we go our separate ways. I've got a bit of hunting to do. No one's stopping you. Goodbye. Farewell! May your days be fruitful and your nights tormented! If our enemy's calling himself a shepherd, he won't be going into hiding. Let's take this slowly. The old man behind him. 
Melchior, I take it? Yeah. Let's gather information on these people. If we know what they're planning, we can find a weakness. They're the most powerful men in the land. If we're going to look into them, we need a lead first. Aizen, do you have any underworld contacts in the capital itself? Like your friend at the port? I don't go inland much, I'm afraid. But Eifried has close ties to a shadow guild. A tavern in the city, run by an old man called Baskerville, serves as a front for them. A shadow guild? Those sorts of things actually exist? Ugh. <laughs> that settles it. Let's head to that tavern. They'll have food, I'm sure. Why not? My stomach made a weird noise. That's another sign that you're alive. The exorcists sure were out in full force to see the Shepherd's inauguration, weren't they? What about that guy you're after? Was he there? What, and have to stand around looking all proper? Nah, that's not his style. But I thought he was one of the top exorcists. That wouldn't matter to him. Huh. All right. Actually, Velvet, speaking of the Shepherd, I noticed he wasn't using his right arm. Was he hurt or something? Yeah. He was badly wounded a long time ago. He lost the use of his sword arm. That's what I figured. But don't get the wrong idea. He's still a master swordsman with his left arm. I can tell that from the way he moves. His movements are steady and measured, and his chi is centered below his navel. Huh? Why does that matter? Some people say that all the body's spiritual energy gathers in a place about two finger widths below the navel. Even when he appears to be in a state of total peace, his guard is never down. He's a formidable adversary. <laughs> and I think I know why my target has placed himself at Artorius's side. Because now I want to take Artorius down too. What'll it be? Some food for the boy. Mabo curry is our specialty. It takes a week to stew properly. Mabo curry? Some of that, then. Say, do you know a man named Baskerville? I heard we might find him here. That old man? A scoundrel and criminal who went against the rules of the Abbey. They executed him long ago. Oh. Velvet! This Mabo curry is amazing! You get along so well. Is he your brother? No. No, he wouldn't be, would he? After all, your brother was murdered before your eyes. How do you know that? The shadows watch those who flinch from the light. So the guild is still active, even after Baskerville's arrest? That's right. Just like how Eifried's crew continues their piracy, even without their captain. So you're the contact? What may I help you with? I want to know what Artorius is planning. Information such as that? It won't come cheap. I have here a list of jobs, not one remotely legal. Take care of all of them, and I'll tell you what you want to know. Take this with you as documentation. It's fake, but it's a good fake. It'll hold up to inspection. It's registered to Mogulu's Menagerie. Oh? Was that not the name you gave to the guard at the gate? <laughs> I can see you're a group to be reckoned with. Report back here once you're finished. However, 
Be aware that should you fail... Then this conversation never took place. Got it. I'll cause you no trouble. I appreciate your understanding. You're welcome to stay the night, free of charge. Forget about work until the morning comes. <sighs> right. You're missing Captain Eifried. The Captain has done much toward our viability. I promise that I'll share anything I hear about him for no charge. Thanks. All we know is there was a pendulum on the ground at the last place he was seen. And that Legate Melchior is connected to the Captain's disappearance. How? We don't know. Sounds like you've got problems of your own. Do you really have time to take on ours as well? I could ask you why you've tied yourself up with Velvet. Me? I've got a debt to repay. Without her, there's no way I'd have ever found my blade again. A demon repaying a debt? Ridiculous. As ridiculous as a pirate Moloch, you think? Hmm. No matter how you look at it, there's nothing reasonable about our rogue existence. And in this brave new world governed by reason, a rogue can either rage and become a monster like me, or... Or band together with others. Like a ship full of pirates, perhaps. Exactly. I admire Velvet's courage, squaring off against the whole world on her own. Few can accomplish that. It takes strength. Real strength. And I'm curious where it comes from. So you're doing it for yourself after all. Is that so wrong? <sighs> no. I'm the same. I need allies on my side, with the strength and courage to combat this so-called order imposed by the Abbey. But anyone who's willing to put up with the creed folly of Eifried's pirates... <laughs> Has to be an even bigger fool than we are. So I'm like you. I want to know how deep her foolishness goes. She'd kill you if she heard that, you know. It's a compliment. Fools that big aren't born every day. Aha. Uh -huh. And I imagine your dear Captain Eifried's much the same. Aye. That man flies his full flag proudly. The Shepherd Artorius, hmm? He's got the populace eating from the palm of his hand. I wonder... Hmm... Just how deeply will the fangs of our would-be tragic heroines scar this broken world of ours? I've got a traitor to find, but in the meantime, this should be a good show. A kind face for such a hard woman. She knew about me and our cover. She's got ears everywhere. And that's not all. She called the papers fake, but they're not. So she's got spies working on the inside, too. I heard that her predecessor, Baskerville, was a monument against authority. But to think he was executed. They've lost their leader, but remain unconquered. Not an organization to trifle with. That's how they have to be to take on the Abbey. We'd better succeed on our missions, and not just to get the information we need. Yeah. Besides, I'd like to get another of those drinks, too. You're a man of taste. That place always has the best. 
You'd better work hard too, if you want more Mabo curry. I will. Destroying red crates in a warehouse? Doesn't sound very nice. Have we ever been nice? <laughs> I suppose not. This is a contract job, so let's keep costs down. I'll call the Von Eltia and have her draw the guards away. If you would. What will we be destroying? Who knows? That's hardly our concern. We have Shepherd Artorius. We'll make it through this era of disaster. Shepherd Artorius? How pompous can you get? Artorius has already seized control of all religious and secular power in Midgand. But now that he's taken on this new title, he's no longer just an authority figure. He's become the very hope of the masses. A dangerous opponent indeed. After seeing that, will you still fight him? Of course I will. He could be a god for all I care. I'll have my vengeance, no matter what. That ceremony was simply fantastic. Lord Artorius's speech was brilliant, of course, but... Prince Percival was really something, too. He raises up Artorius to help the country and its people, then willingly steps down. Now that's what I call a king. You think so? Well, to me, he just looks like a wimp. He may look that way, but he has a great inner strength. He's excelled as a scholar and a leader since he was young. His only hobby is falconry, but sadly, I hear he hasn't had the time for it lately. You seem like a big supporter of his. Well, he's got two younger brothers, but just between you and me, they're dolts. Worse, they hang with a bad crowd. If anything were to happen to Prince Percival, the future of Midgand would be bleak. I see. So everyone's hopes are riding on him, then. Which means Midgand's vulnerable without him. It's a history book titled The Rise and Fall of Midgand. About 800 years ago, our continent was conquered by a military force from another continent. Few records exist of the following 500 years, a period known as the Era of Darkness, or the Dark Period. Then 300 years ago, a great hero named Claudin Asgard reunited the kingdom, bringing an end to the Dark Period. Claudin, huh? Where have I heard that name before? All right, that's enough for today. Thanks for teaching me, Arthur. Your techniques are so amazing. Where did you learn them? They came from my own master, a man named Claudin. He developed them himself. Wow, they're so graceful. I wish I could move like that. 
I've taught you the forms, but for some reason your execution deviates from the ideal. Uh, well, my body just kind of moves on its own. You're a handful, Velvet. But I will say you do resemble Claude in some. He was a strange person himself. He always wore this peculiar cape, for instance. A uh, cape, you say? Deep down, Claudin was strong like fire, vivacious like water, steadfast like earth, and free like wind. I can't help but admire him to this day. Wow, I'd love to meet him. Sadly, that's impossible. Is he... dead? Yes, he is. He died to protect me. That's why I... No way. The events recounted in this book happened 300 years ago. It can't be the same Claudin. Uh, Velvet, are you okay? I'm fine. Don't mind me. King Claudin was quite strong, wasn't he? He was more than just that. He's the most well-loved and trusted king in our history. Or so the book claims. To this day, all of Miggan's rulers claim to be direct descendants of King Claude and Asgard. Knowing that, there might be meaning behind them bestowing Arturius with the grandiose title of Shepherd. I could see it as an attempt to recreate the same glory enjoyed by the Hero King who ended the Dark Period. If that's true, it's a childish ploy. The world's not so easily changed. I wouldn't be so sure. What matters is that the title inspires hope in the people, who in turn give him their support. Then, as their shepherd, he can guide his flock in any direction he pleases. Hmm. If our... High Priest Gideon is an honest and righteous man. He's dedicated his life to his faith and to the church. Now, as the representative of the clergy, he's thrown his full support behind the abbey. Hmm. So, he's a man of principle. That's right. He even donated his personal savings to support orphanages and hospitals. So be at ease. For he offers up prayers for all equally, even for the more dubious among us, such as yourselves. Right. I'm so grateful. I can feel the tears of gratitude coming. Any moment now. Outrageous! Why doesn't the Abbey crack down on the taverns? They are dens of evil that dispense only luxury, temptation, and escape. They must be stopped! I'd rather they didn't. That place over there has the best drinks in town. <laughs> See? That's exactly what I mean. They tempt us into wickedness, ruining man and woman alike. The more you drink, the happier and more joyful you get. All the important things in life stop mattering. Their Mabo curry is delicious. <laughs> No, no, no! See? Even children are being tempted by their evils! Eating both Mabo and curry together, it's heresy! There is a limit to the amount of luxury one can endure. What the world needs now is abstinence, austerity, restraint! If you want to deny yourself, go ahead and do it. 
but don't force your beliefs onto others. People eat to live. Some even live to eat. It's part of being human. Velvet. That's pretty convincing coming from you. Leave me alone. D hey, I want to eat and drink to my heart's content too, but doing so makes us no better than animals. In order for humanity to survive these harsh times, we need to overcome our instincts and act like rational beings. Come, sinner, and repent your wicked deeds. Repent? Are you talking to me? Yes. When I look at your vestments around your chest, your hips, I can tell your sins are many and deep. Say that again. Exactly what were you staring at? Well, mankind is rife with sin, and I am no different. You must acknowledge your misdeeds and confess them to the great Empyreans. By confronting your sinful urges, you will be empowered to resist them. Is that so? You're saying I just need to confess all the bad things I've done? Yes. Confess your darkest sins, my child, assured that none is beyond the forgiveness of the Empyreans. Empyreans, hear my confession. When I was in prison, I instigated a riot and used it to break myself out. Huh? Then I set fire to some warehouses in town and stole a ship to make my getaway. Then I teamed up with some pirates to destroy a military fortress. I killed anyone who got in my way. What? What do you think, Father? Will the Empyreans forgive me? I... Uh, uh, I think you should turn yourself into the Abbey and let them help you repent. That's convenient. I'm already planning on going to the Abbey. You see, I'm going to kill their boss, Artorius. I... I need an exorcist over here! Quick! Somebody! Anybody! <laughs> That's... about how I figured it'd go. Praise be Shepherd Artorius. Thanks to him, people have started worshipping the Empyreans again. Now our salvation is at hand. The Empyreans? They are the gods that created the world? Yeah. The four Empyreans each rule one of the four elements. Earth, water, fire, and wind. I read in a book that Empyrean worship is the oldest form of human religion. The Midgan Church also worshipped the Empyreans. But because we've had peace and prosperity for so long, true belief in them has slowly faded. So now that people are frightened of the demon blight, they're clinging to their once forgotten gods. Wait a minute. Maybe Artorius is using religion to manipulate the people into following him. Oh, great Empyreans! Please grant Shepherd Artorius the strength to save your humble servants. If that's the case, he's done a damn fine job of it. That is one impressive cathedral. It fits the capital. Yes. It's incredible. Hmm. It's as I heard. It wasn't built using Moloch arts, but the latest architectural engineering techniques. Look at those arches. The mathematical logic. The structural ornamentation. This is an architectural marvel. So, is that Empyrean in there? I highly doubt it. Empyrean worship has become mostly symbolic over the years. This cathedral wasn't built as a place of worship. It's commemorative, to celebrate the continent's unification. In other words, a show of power. That explains why they spared no expense. It's too early to be impressed. This is just the entrance, and it's unfinished. They're constructing a colossal temple inside here. They say it'll take centuries to complete. Centuries? That's insane. How could they think that's a good idea? Your guess is as good as mine. I suppose that sometimes, humans just have a need to push their limits. Yeah, seriously. The Reaper and a demon are shaking their heads at this overwrought monstrosity. Intrinsic worth, zero. I wonder what it'll look like when it's finished.
He may be the shepherd now, but no one knows who he was before the advent, or what he did. No, they don't. But he showed up one day with a malak in tow, routed the demons, and formed a band of skilled young exorcists. That sounds pretty suspicious. Right? But the kingdom readily acknowledged his abilities and his conviction, and threw its full support behind him. Maybe he plans on usurping power for himself. Not likely. He's worked tirelessly to rebuild the church and state, and to shore up the royal family's position. Lining his pockets from the state coffers, then? Not the slightest chance. Rather, he's got all the other higher-ups worried he's working himself to death. Then what's he after? Hmm. Maybe there is no ulterior motive. Maybe he is our shepherd. Whatever the case, if he hadn't shown up when he did three years ago, Midgan would be a smoking ruin. Greetings, Magilu's Menagerie. You've come to exactly the right place. You must be a Bloodwing. What do you want? You already know about the Code Red demons, right? The really strong demons the Abbey wants gone? Yeah. Would you ever consider hunting them down for us? We'll reward you properly. Reward? Why pay us when the Abbey would do it for free? It's complicated. The Abbey is calculating in their deployments especially where Code Red demons are concerned. I get it. They'll only act if they determine the demon would cause more harm than the losses they'd incur in battling it. That does seem logical. But sometimes, people have lost a loved one to such a demon. Or sometimes, they have a connection to the person the demon used to be. Wherever there's a Code Red demon, you can bet there are people willing to pay good money to have it killed. <sighs> and let me guess, that's where the Blood Wings come in. Exactly. There are blood wings all throughout Midgant who have information on these code red demons. If you defeat a demon and report back to my comrades, they'll make sure you're well compensated. All right, I understand. But I won't make any promises. That's fine. No sense in drawing up a contract when the hunter probably won't survive anyway. If you get results, let us know. We'll hold up our end. That being said, I'd feel guilty if I didn't help out at least a little, so... Here, take this. Those blood wings are definitely a rough crowd. To be fair, things are never that straightforward when you're dealing with demons. All that matters is that there's something in it for us if we hunt those code red demons. The only thing better than fighting formidable foes is getting paid for it. Just remember that these code red demons are tough enough to make the Abbey shiver. We'd be wise not to underestimate them. We should talk to those blood wings before considering any of the marks. They might have information that will help us prepare. Yeah, and we better remember to upgrade our equipment. Right. Hey, Laffy said. What is it, Rokuro? Mabo Curry. Huh? Oh. <laughs> You're an interesting one. You like Mabo Curry that much, huh? It smells good. And it's creamy and kind of spicy. Eating it made me feel nice. I'd say you love it then. Do all Malakim have such an appetite? Each has their own tastes. Some eat a lot, some eat a little. Just like humans or demons. What do you like, Aizen? Drinks, I suppose. What else? Uh, pretty much just drinks. Don't you like anything else? Is it a problem if I don't? No. I'm just wondering. For me, it's drinks and candied sweet potatoes. That's where you boil strips of sweet potato in oil and then coat them in sugar, right? Yeah, I never get tired of them. 
So you like to drink, but you've also got a sweet tooth? Yeah. Is that so strange? No. Candied sweet potatoes. Sounds good. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a sign that you're alive, remember? Right. Not worth my time. Rendon Flash Terror now. Let's go. Let's die. Deception. Dark Fist. Form two. Rendon Flash Terror now. Unarmed? <laughs> Hardly. These are deadly weapons. Huh. Have you heard? The Abbey is building a new base. I hear it's a huge temple in the middle of some mountains near a site of ancient ruins. If they've got time to build a temple, they should use it to kill more demons instead. You sure you want to talk like that here? Ha! I'm different from all those losers who swoon over the Shepherd's pretty words and ignore reality. No one's found a way to cure demon blight yet, and demons are still swarming everywhere. Sure, maybe things are not as bad as they could have been. But we still have no idea what's going to happen next. Think about it. Demons could be infiltrating the city as we speak, and we'd be none the wiser. Yep, you're completely right. All right, the guards are gone. Let's move in. Benwick and the crew did a fine job. Red crates. These must be our targets. The seal of Midgant Cathedral? Should we look inside? There's no need. Burn them, Lafayette. Okay. We're done here. That storm costs too much time. I must report to Lord Artorius as soon as possible. <gasps> it's
it's you! Oh, hey. The crybaby. Eleanor Hume! Exorcist Praetor! Double hit! Wait a minute! Get away this time! You really want to fight, don't you? Willing to fight without your Malachim? No! You set the storehouse ablaze?! The people have worked so hard to withstand this time of crisis! How can you destroy what they have so painstakingly built?! Because I'm not human. You'll pay for this, you demon! More Malachim up her sleeves! will protect you, Madam Eleanor! Come and face me now, demon! He's adorable. Uh, am I? Ooh, I found you at last! That bad, bad voice! The info, you traitor! You'll never leave my clutches again! Not her! No! What are you doing? Get out there and fight! Hey, look! Is that smoke? It is! Fire! The fire has spread enough. Let's get going. You're coming with us. Let me go! Witch nippers! Madam Exorcist! What happened? Oh, you're badly hurt. I can wait. Gather the people and put out that fire! Yes, madam! Tell me, do you know what was being kept in that warehouse? Um, mostly nectar, I believe. Vast stores of the medicine, provided by High Priest Gideon, to be distributed to doctors across the land. Medicine given by the church? Why would anybody destroy it? Looks like we're in the clear. <laughs> Misfortune and anguish! I had that little turncoat right in front of me! Well, at least now I know where to find him! That weird little Moloch was the one you were looking for? The very same. The Moloch Bienfu! A creature of unfathomable wickedness and beguiling cuteness who broke the heart of this wretched maiden! <laughs> Once I finally catch him, who knows what I'll be capable of? Not sure I get it. Me neither. Good. Pray that you never do. Let's go back and report our success. What's the deal with you and that exorcist, Eleanor? She had tears in her eyes when we first saw her at Northgand. Velvet poked fun at her, calling her the crybaby exorcist. Why would an exorcist cry? Sacrificing the individual for the good of the many is part of Artorius' philosophy. She seemed troubled by that. She's naive. That she can still carry on shows just how strong she is. It looks like they don't hand out the rank of Praetor to just anyone. Hmm? Just stay sharp around her. That's all. By the way, is that Bienfu character that Magilu was after really a Moloch? He may look strange, but yes. He's still a Moloch. That means Magilu is an exorcist. Why does she call herself a witch then? If she got locked up in that prison, she must have been kicked out of the Abbey. 
Or she could be a fraud. Yeah. Even if she wasn't an exorcist, she could still perform some tricks with a Moloch like that. I will protect you, Madam Eleanor! Fish me now, demon! <laughs> right? <laughs> Was that laughter? Uh, I'm sorry. Why apologize? Bienfu is funny, right? Right. Then if you want to laugh, laugh! <laughs> If you think that's funny, you should give it a try for yourself. Say, Hi, I'm Luffy Set. Uh, all right. Hi, I'm Luffy Set. Knock it off. Huh? What's the problem? People are staring. Don't attract attention. I'm sorry. <sighs> She's so uptight. Let's try it together later, Luffy Set. Uh, all right. Well, we've learned one thing coming to the capital. The Abbey and Shepherd Artorius have expanded their power immensely. They might as well be the Empire now. They have the undying support of the populace. The Shepherd, savior of humanity. <laughs> I wonder what he meant by the blessings of the Empyrean Enominat. That's what they call the gods they worship in church, right? The Empyreans? He promised a lot in that speech. But can he really command such a power? I have no idea. Not even we Malachim know of them beyond the stories and legends. He called Inominat the fifth Empyrean. There should only be four, one ruling each element. Is he talking about a new Empyrean? Have you heard anything, Luffy said? Sorry. I don't know anything about this. It doesn't matter. We should be careful about taking his words at face value. The man is no saint. He'll stop at nothing to achieve his aims. But there's no way he could have a god at his beck and call. Don't underestimate the Abbey. Trust me, I'm not. That's why I'm using the Shadow Guild to help us hunt them down. And to make sure that I kill him. Trouble at the docks, was there? Well, so long as the job was done. Good luck. A scholar missing on the road to Gallus Lake. Strange request. If they know where he vanished, why don't they just look for him there? Exactly. And what's so illegal about a missing persons case that you gotta go to the underworld? I can think of a few possibilities, but our job isn't to ask questions.
I won't improve by f I'll finish this quickly. One down. Not even worth my time. Hey, that noisy demon looks pretty strong. Think it might be one of those Code Red demons? Doesn't matter to me. I'd rather not waste my time fighting it if I don't need to. I don't see it as a waste of time. Look, the Abbey only has a handful of exorcists strong enough to take something like this down, right? Probably. I'd say Praetors like Lady Teresa and the Legates could probably take it on. And those guys are all your enemies, right? <sighs> I see where you're going with this. The Abbey is strong, both in its individual members and as an organization. And if we're to close the gap between us and them, we need to fight strong opponents like this demon. That's what I would do. But you're free to make your own decision. All right. I'll concede the point. But we should determine just how strong it is first. I don't want us to bite off more than we can chew. That goes without saying. I'd rather not get myself killed due to inadequate preparation. You don't have to worry that much. If you want to go fight, I'll help keep you safe myself. I promise. I don't recall asking for your protection. You don't need to. Finish this now. They were nothing. I'll finish this now. That's all, huh?
Not even worth my time. Who's there? What on earth are guards doing here? Watch out! They've got Marla with you! They're no ordinary cell phones. Sheesh. What do you suppose they were guarding? 
A little lost lamb, perhaps. You think they're holding Mendy captive? Is there someone here named Mendy? We've come to help. Oh, thank goodness. I can finally go home. So they were keeping you prisoner. They made you mine vermilion ore? Yes, I discovered a method of refining it, and it cost me dearly. What's vermilion ore? A rare stone made of concentrated nutrients. It can be used in medicine, but it's also poisonous. Correct. So you were making medicine? Yes. They were forcing me to make a nutritional substance called nectar. Isn't vermilion ore supposed to be highly addictive? I, I told them that, but what choice did I have? Whatever. Our task is complete. Can you get back to Logris on your own? I can. I'm terribly sorry. Why apologize to me? We've done what we came for. Let's get back to the old lady.
not even worth my time. Are we ready for this? Let's I'll go. stop you! This is the size of that ass. Watch yourself! This guy means business! I know, I know! They were nothing. Whew! That thing was pretty strong. You just wanted something good to train on. I'm not in it just for myself. If I get stronger, I'll be more helpful in your battles. This counts towards the repayment of my debt. But you don't deny at least part of it was for yourself. Of course not. Every true swordsman wants to train so they can improve themselves. It might be a little late to ask, but what debt exactly are you repaying, Rokuro? My sword is my life. When I was separated from it, Velvet told me where to find it. Also, she broke me free from a 500-year-long prison sentence. You say that like it's an afterthought. And that's why I can't fully trust you. I don't follow. Us Rangetsu men are renowned for our sense of duty and commitment. Actually, now that you mention it, Rangetsu's a pretty unusual last name. I heard your family specializes in unconventional swords and fighting styles. That's true. Our ancestor was a swordsman from way off in another country who came to this land a long time ago. A foreign swordsman, huh? I guess that explains why your swords and techniques stand out so much. He had quite a hard time getting by in this unusual land, until he was taken in by an aristocratic family. Ever since, the Rangetsu clan has accepted the rule of their benefactors and has served them in repayment of their debt. Served them as bodyguards? Bodyguards, assassins, spies, body doubles. 
Whatever the order, your family will carry it through. Always return that which you've borrowed, even if you must repay it with your life. That was our ancestors' creed. In truth, four of my five older brothers are dead. You have to admit, we take our sense of duty seriously. Yeah. All right, I get it. You and your family are all tied to your sense of honor. That seems to be the case. We can count on him. As long as he's on our side, at least. Oh, come on, that's not fair. I hear Mendy made it back safe. That takes care of that problem. Keep up the good work. So, somebody means to ambush the Royal Medical Society on the Danan Highway. The Royal Medical Society is a group of doctors that travel around healing the sick. They're funded by donations given by ordinary folk. Hmm. Why would anyone attack them? Don't ask me. Some people are just twisted. And why would an underworld group defend them? Who knows? Something to do with the attackers, perhaps? Out of our way! That there! That's our food! Slow them! Shut Give it up! It's ours! Next! Bridget Photon! Cut! No escape! 
So the attackers were demons. I guess that's why they needed us to stop the attack. The doctors? Looks like they ran off. It appears they were after this stuff. Medicine with the cathedral seal. That scarf, did that belong to the attackers? Yeah, all three were wearing them. Does it mean something? They were just demons. Aggressive ones who attacked the innocent. We've finished all the jobs. Let's get back to the old lady's tavern. <laughs> you sure do like that Mabo curry. Uh, do I? Don't ask me. You didn't think it was tasty, Velvet? Couldn't tell you. Huh? Food doesn't hold any flavor for her. According to Velvet, she can never feel sated, and the only thing she can taste is blood. Oh, I see. Uh. What's the matter? You're gloomier than usual. Am I actually useful? Huh? You can cut down any enemy, and Aizen can beat them up. Velvet is strong and can eat anything. Hmm? Huh? But I'm not good at fighting, and apparently I'm always gloomy. Is that what's bothering you? In a fight, offense alone isn't everything. Hurting your foes means nothing if you don't live to tell the tale afterwards. Your healing arts are what let us always fight at our best. He's right. Compared to dead weight like Mogilu, you're plenty helpful out there. Only compared to Mogilu? I didn't mean it like that. I was just saying she never helped at all. Oh. You're not going to grow overnight. Be patient. Huh? You've only just been set free. That you've even managed to keep up with us this far is a feat in and of itself. Strength comes by continually improving your mind and body. Keep your spirits up and keep working at it, and you'll get there before you know it. I will? The drive to improve is what's important. Right. By the way, those folks we just passed were talking about us. What were they saying? They were warning each other to be careful, talking about the demons that burned down Helavis and destroyed the Seagate Fortress being near the capital. Considering how bold we've been, everyone's still fairly calm about it. We'll be famous soon enough once we kill the world's savior. Sounds like that could get fun. Fun? Why? The people trying to capture us will put prices on our heads and put up wanted posters everywhere. Depending on who draws the likenesses, each portrait can look completely different. You know what I'm talking about, right, Eisen? Aye. I've seen dozens of pictures of myself. Some make me a monster, others make me a handsome youth. It's fascinating, really. I hope I get a poster soon. Then do your best to really stir things up. Right. I'll stir everything up good. Welcome back. 
That must have been hard work. How does marble curry sound to you? I also have our specialty peach pie on hand. We had a deal. Spill it. <laughs> Shepherd Artorius has gone north, up the Danan Highway, at the Abbey's newest temple, the Empyrean's Throne. He is expected to be there for a while. Are they relocating there? In a sense, yes. They're holding a ritual to move the seat of the Empyrean Innominat. Innominat. In other words, the Abbey's new god. It is a very serious affair, so I imagine Melchior will be there along with the other High Exorcists. Suits us fine. I might even find him there. That will do. Somewhere in there we'll find a chance to strike. Perhaps. But be aware that security near the throne is on high alert. We'll manage to get through. No, you won't. You may be able to fool the guards, but there's no tricking the barrier they've put up. They've used arts to erect a giant wall, keeping outsiders away. But they have to get through themselves. That implies some sort of key, right? Yes. In fact, one of our people is looking into that as we speak. However, I'm afraid... <laughs> It'll cost us. You learn quickly. And here's the bill. Okay, now we're really not being nice. Consider it done. Aren't you going to ask why you have to kill a high priest? I imagine it's because he's the one controlling the nectar supply. The Church is the sole producer and distributor of a highly addictive substance. They rake in huge profits, while the common man, along with your people, suffer for it. Does that cover it? You noticed your tasks were related. That was the real test, wasn't it? And you passed. No matter how skilled you are, you have to know more than how to swing a sword to earn my trust. Don't misunderstand my intentions. I'm willing to do anything if it brings me to Artorius. I ditched my scabbard long ago. I see. So you are the embodiment of a bare blade. A more formal introduction is in order. I am Tabitha Baskerville, leader of the Bloodwing Butterflies. I'm Velvet. Tell me about the High Priest. Each evening, he prays for protection from calamity at the royal villa on the Castle Logris grounds. Tradition holds that the High Priest should be alone for the prayer. That would seem the best time to strike. How do we get into the villa? Carry this insignia with you, and allies of the Bloodwings will offer you their aid. We'll hold up our end. Just find out about that key. Ah, <sighs> uh, Velvet? Are you okay? It's nothing. But you seem... I said it's nothing! Uh <gasps> Sneaking into the castle will be an all-night job. Let's take this time to get everything ready, and then rest at the tavern. Yeah. High Priest Gideon will be alone at night. Rest up, and talk to the Tavern Keep when you're ready. The Shadow Guild... Operates this tavern. It's been that way for generations. The red scarf is a symbol of the Bloodwing butterflies? Aye. You seem to know a lot. Show that insignia to a person in a red scarf, and they'll help you out.
If nectar made from vermilion ore is so bad for your health that it was banned, why are they making it? They make it because it was banned. Huh? Just because the powers that be say a rule is for the greater good, it doesn't mean that everyone will see eye to eye with them. If Tabitha's Mabo curry was outlawed, would you really be able to never eat it again? I wouldn't like it, but if it's against the rules... Uh... <laughs> well, you'll get hungry no matter what. People want what they want. But anything forbidden is bound to be rare. And when things are rare, they become expensive. So that's why people make it. The world isn't a simple place. There's an underside to everything. An underside? Contract killers, secret weapons dealers, loan sharks that charge outrageous interest, pirates like me, the folks who offered us mooring for information, and the gilded helivies are all part of it. As are the people who dye chicks blue to sell them at a higher price. And the people who bet on alleyway bug fights. <gasps> and they'll come to you with a smile, so you can't let your guard down if you want to stay safe. What sorts of bugs do they make fight? That's the part that got your attention? 